question is for you. How can America best promote green energy without additional costs, such as cap and trade? First of all, further taxes are not the answer. I can tell you that cap and trade energy tax would be an absolute disaster, not only for the United States, but particularly for Arkansas. Uh, I believe that we should pursue all energy sources uh, at all times. We, we can't talk about energy independence and then vote against offshore drilling, vote against drilling in Anwar, vote against new refineries, vote against nuclear, uh, nuclear power. We've got to pursue all of those things. And I'll tell you, the Fayetteville Shell is an incredible, extraordinary blessing to the state of Arkansas. We have huge deposits of natural gas there, and, and natural gas is a clean, green energy source, and don't let anyone tell you differently. And the impact of the Fayetteville Shell on this state has allowed this state to avoid some of the worst of the recession that has hit the rest of, of the rest of the country. So we need to pursue alternative energy. We need to pursue uh, wind and solar. But we've got to, let's not kid ourselves. We're going to be relying on oil and gas for a long time. And we need to continue to pursue those. You'd have to fill up the whole state of Texas with windmills to power Waldo. And, and, and the bottom line is that ain't going to happen. We've got to keep, we've got to keep looking for gas. You know, the truth is, is you, you should not compel, the government should not compel people to buy green energy. You know, when the science of global warming is far less than convincing, I just don't, I, I don't think your science is right on this. You know, this type of energy is more costly across the board. Green energy is more costly. And, and it is because it's a tax. It is taxed and taxed and taxed. We need to lower, we need, to, we need lower cost forms of energy. For our manufacturing, for American manufacturing, we are seeing it leave this country in record numbers. Jobs are gone. We have got to start bringing lower cost forms of energy, and that includes drilling, what we need to do here, and using our natural resources. Uh, you know, gas, obviously natural gas in Arkansas is huge, and that's exactly what we're going to do. Scott, for you, list one thing that you admire about President Obama and one thing that, you, that concerns you about President Obama. Is there just one? Um, you know, President Obama has done us the greatest, the conservative movement, the greatest, absolute greatest favor that we could have ever done since Ronald Reagan, and that is awakening the conservatives in this nation. Uh, we've been asleep. 2010 is the beginning of the end of socialism and, and the path that we're headed down right now. Um, I tell you what, that's the biggest thing he's done for us. The, the one thing that I really uh, get very, very displeased with him is the fact that their liberal administration seems to feel like that they can absolutely spin their way out of anything. All of these things are absolutely short-term solutions. None of them are long-term uh, fixes. We don't need that kind of thinking. We need thinking 10, 20, and 30 years from now. We don't want our grandchildren to be stuck with the debt that, that is absolutely overwhelming us right now. So long-term solutions, is they don't do them. They think they can tax everything right now, tax their way out of everything, and it's putting a, an enormous burden on us now, and it will be for years to come. <clears throat> the biggest problem I have with President Obama is uh, his misplaced reliance on the government. It seems that for every problem this country has, he thinks that government is the solution. <clears throat> My belief is that government spends too much, it tries to do too much, and a lot of what it does, it doesn't do successfully. I believe that this country needs to have an open and honest debate about the role of government. What is this country going to be when it grows up? Are we going to move more toward a European style uh, government? Or are we going to be different like we always have been? I say we should be different. That's been the key to American exceptionalism. And the less different we are, the worse off we're going to be. Question number 19. How will you help improve transparency and accountability in the House? I recently uh, put out a list of reforms that, that I advocate. I call them Arkansas Values in Action. What that basically means is uh, it's a way for me to demonstrate my Arkansas values, the impact that they would have uh, when I get to Congress. 
Number one, I have said publicly uh, that I will not take the congressional pension. Congressmen get pensions. Uh, they get an advantage on their pension. I believe that they ought to be just like any other federal employee. So I have said that I will find a way, whatever the mechanics are, uh, to, to not accept that. I've also said that I will uh, put a stop or try to stop the automatic pay raises. If a congressman thinks he ought to get a pay raise, then he ought to put the bill out there with his name on it as a standalone and let there be an up and down vote. I've also said if they can't get the appropriation bills, the spending bills done on time, then all Congress's pay is suspended until they get it done. And that ought to be a good incentive. And they don't get back pay when they get it done. It's suspended and they don't recover that. That's a problem because what happens every year in the House is instead of having the individual appropriations bills, you end up with an omnibus bill. And an omnibus bill is so big and so overwhelming and packed with earmarks, which I oppose, and that's part of it, that they can't debate it. It's overwhelming. So those are some of them. You can look at my website, www.timberforcongress.com, and read the rest. Okay, thanks, man. 45 seconds. We've been talking about since day one uh, what, is our, what does Arkansas need? What kind of representation does Arkansas need? And you know, I feel like the best people to do that are the people that live here. I, mean, I have been proposing since day one accountability groups all across the district. This is something that, you know, I do with my employees. Uh, we call it spitball, a little bit different in, 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 uh, in, the, in the private sector. But we get in, we have employee needs, and we sit there and we say, what are we going to do to make us better? And we go all the way around the room, everybody has ideas, and everybody has input, and they gain ownership in that. And that's what we need here in the district, is we need groups of all different kinds throughout the district that we'll meet with on a regular basis to get ideas from Arkansans about what is best for our district.